Hi there, this is Sherry Hayes with MomDelights.com, and today we're going to talk about the connection between homeschooling and revival. So stay tuned. Okay, so we're hearing about this revival going on in Asbury, uh, Asbury College in Kentucky, and um, we're excited. I'm so excited. I've been asking and praying God for a move. You know, um, I just notice, especially in the young people, it's like there's like a disconnect between what what their what their Christian life is supposed to be like when we put them in, uh, you know, youth group and young peoples or whatever, and what it really can be. Um, I was uh, saved in 1976. And it was during a time when people didn't wait for pastors or programs. They just met together and they prayed together and they had fellowship together. And it was normal for a number of Bible studies to be going on in people's homes. And you just didn't even think about it. People just did this. You know, it was just God moving in people's individual lives to do things. Um, it was exciting. It was an exciting time. I remember I went to a small high school overseas. It was a, a, an American uh, military high school. And there was a fellowship of believers that met together and they, we didn't know about it at the time, but they went together and they held hands and they circled the whole school. It wasn't very big, but anyway, they circled the whole school and they prayed and they claimed that whole high school for Jesus. Okay. And then when school started, uh, YWAM came through. And YWAM put on a whole bunch of fun things. It did movies and everything. And we and God sent us a uh, Christian coach um, that was on fire for the Lord. And the whole reason he was sent to our area was to bring the gospel. And he, he was the he was a football coach. And uh, so that was his whole reason for being there. Even though he was a really good coach too. And we won more games under him than anyone else. Um, but what happened was that a revival broke out in our school and we were, um, we were so motivated just to know Jesus and to grow in him that we went to Bible studies at people's houses and we also would meet during breaks and lunch and we would form our own Bible studies together and that, some of it was silly, you know, but God didn't look at it as being silly because it was kids that were hungry for the Lord. We got together. We would we would hug in the hallways and pray for each other. It was it was really amazing, and it affected how people lived, and it affected how we looked at things. It was it was really a good beginning. So so when you look at that, we are seeing a touch, a revival, an awakening, whatever people want to call it, and I do believe it's genuine. I've watched a lot of it and I can see that there's a lot of repentance going on which is which is one of the hallmarks of a true awakening or true revival it's not just about how I'm feeling it's understanding that I'm being touched by a most holy God and that I want to uh, mold my whole existence to him and I think that's what homeschooling is also an expression of because I believe that <clears throat> God blessed us with lockdowns uh, when I first heard that they were locking all the schools down, I said, Lord, you're, you're in this. You're using this for your glory. And I think when, before that, a lot of us were being drawn to homeschooling because we were so concerned about our children. I know that in, um, in the late 80s, um, I actually heard about homeschooling first in 1984. Yeah. <laughs> I had friends that were homeschooling their children and I thought they were cuckoo. And, um, but, um, in 1984, and then as my little child became old enough to go to school, I started looking into it. I had some other Christian friends that were homeschooling and, um, it was, it was that I was so concerned about what kind of education she was going to get. I was concerned about the influences. I was concerned about her not being part of her mama and daddy at such tender age to have to go out and contend with other children that were strange to her, that strangers to her, you know. Um, and all these factors, and I did lots of research, and decided, well, even though I thought my friends were cuckoo, <laughs> I can see why they were drawn to it. And really, what it is, is an expression of what God tells us in His Word in Malachi 4, 5, and 6. Let me get my Bible. So in Malachi 4, chapter 4, verses 5 and 6, we, hear, we read this. 
Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. And so I believe that one of the hallmarks of a true awakening or a true revival is that uh, parents and fathers and mothers start realizing the important the importance of having re good relationships with their children. And I think homeschooling is part of that. When you homeschool, you are actually, you think it's about academics at first. You think it's just about education. But when you start homeschooling your children, you realize you're having to be with this person 24-7. You are developing a relationship with this person that would not be possible if they were off at school most of the day, right? Or activities or whatever. So that is part of that relationship that's talked about in Malachi 4, 5, and 6. You are putting your needs, your wants, your desires um, to the side, and you are putting that child first. That is turning your heart to that child. And that's somehow, in God's sight, that is precious. That's part of what he wants to see happening. That's part of true repentance. So that's the first hallmark I can see where homeschooling is actually part of a revival movement. Now, I'm going to read to you, I have some notes, you know, I love to write things, <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to try to put this, transcribe it, and put it in a blog post, because I know I've been neglecting that. But um, anyway, so I'm going to read to you, and then I'll stop with my own thoughts and ideas, and I've had lots of scriptures here, so if you want to take notes, you can do that. Okay, first I'm going to talk to you, and I'm going to say, it is not by chance that you are homeschooling your children. It is a response to the truth of God. We are all drawn to it, aren't we? Aren't we drawn to his truth everywhere? Believers and non-believers alike. Why? Because it is our nature. We are created in the image of God. We are his image bearers. We are either running towards his truth or we are running away from it. <laughs> Since you are homeschooling, it is very likely your soul is weary of lies, right? Lies in the media, lies in the schools, lies from the government, lies from your relative, li lies everywhere, okay? So instead of running away from truth, you are running towards truth, right? In fact, you are hungering and thirsting after truth. That's why you're homeschooling. That's what God has called you to. God is calling you out of the world system and into his economy, his system, his kingdom on earth. As a teen, I was a believer. I accepted God's word as fact, right? I said, well, God said it, that settles it, I believe it, right? So, or is it, God said it, I believe it, that settles it, that's how it goes. Okay, and, but the facts that I was presented, the quote-unquote facts I was presented in, in school, sometimes they kind of contradicted what the Bible said. And so according to the curriculum, the earth, nations, everything has been running along merrily without any input from God whatsoever. Isn't that the impression we get? Like, okay, well, this happened and this happened, this happened, but God had nothing to do with it. These people, not, well, they might mention every once in a while that, but really, really, rarely. I mean, they don't even count in usually... Uh, the Hebrew nation as anything to even to be, like they might mention it, but they don't really talk about it as being the central part of God's plan and his history. They don't even do that. So you kind of get this idea that the world's been going on without God ever having any input in it, right? And so you just think, well, this is how it is, and whatever we do, it doesn't really matter what we do or do not do, because God's not really interested in this part of our lives anyway. He just wants us to go to church on Sunday, be nice to people, and sing some hymns and worship songs, and we're good for the week, right? <laughs> but um, that's not really the truth. But I didn't know that. Instinctively, I knew that there was something very, very wrong with the way I was taught to look at human existence, but I didn't have the tools to confirm and explain my convictions. I had no way of explaining why that evolution didn't make sense. or because I knew it wasn't biblical, but I didn't know. I saw, they could give Okay, well, this is the reason why, because we have this fact, this fact, this fact, this fact. Therefore, it must be true. I didn't understand that you could take those same facts and reinterpret them from a biblical worldview. But, okay, I didn't know it. I didn't know it. And sometimes I would be challenged. Um, I had one one teacher that, um, 
you know, he said, I don't understand how people can say a God of love in the Old Testament would have had all those people killed. And if anybody in here has any other different opinion, I wish you would raise your hand. And I had to raise my hand. <laughs> the only one. Even though I think there were some other believers in the room, I was the only one who raised my hand. So after school, I'm the one that had the conversation. Yeah, so after class, I would like to speak with you. Isn't that nice? <laughs> but I didn't know how. I didn't know how to articulate in any way that this person could even... I didn't even ha know how to have an, uh, uh, an intelligent conversation about this with someone. I was lost, okay? <laughs> um, when it came to that, anyway. <laughs> um, and I think when we send our kids to school, you know, people say, send your kid to school because, you know, they can be missionaries. Well, if they don't even know how to articulate what they believe... How can they be a missionary when they're supposed to say, I believe in Jesus and he's love, but you know, that, that's nice, okay, but how does that help anybody when they're trying to figure out, did we come from monkeys or not, right? Okay, then I started to homeschool. At first, I was unsure of myself. You know, I mean, everybody is, right? But I started, when, when I started actually officially homeschooling in 1989, I started on a quest I was on a quest to find out how these tr these facts these 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 facts fit into God's truth. I was I had my little antennas up, beep, 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 and I was searching. I don't know if you're like that. Maybe maybe this is just the first time you ever thought you could do that. Maybe you didn't even know that you're supposed to do that. But we are we are supposed to be renewing our minds. Okay, I'll read those scriptures in a minute. But once we become born again. When we say, Jesus, I am a sinner and I accept your sacrifice to cover my sin and I want to be born again in, of the Spirit. That's John chapter 3. So when we do that, we are twice born. Then we start on this quest to make our mind, will, and emotions and our bodies line up with the truth of God. Right? Um, so that's what I, I was on this quest when I was homeschooling. Finally, I was able to take the same facts and truths from my own education and reinterpret them. Um, okay. F from a biblical worldview. As I learned to apply one precept after another, there was such a release. It was like, yes, Eureka, I found it. <laughs> Thanks to many who have laid the groundwork, my entire outlook on science, history, geopolitics, relationships, how I make bread, <laughs> everything changed. Let me read to you Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. You've probably met it, read it a number of times, maybe not, but let's just read it. I have them marked on my Bible so I don't have to be fishing around too much. So, let me read this to you. Okay, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transform, transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Okay, so this world wants to squeeze us into its mold. God says that we have to be transformed by renewing our minds. So we've got to start thinking God's thoughts after him. That's what Johannes Kepler said. He was a famous astrophysicist, right? So he said that what he did in science is he thought God, he, he was thinking God's thoughts after him. Right? So that's what we do when we homeschool. We are teaching our children. And as we teach, we're discovering these new things. These ways of applying God's truth, God's word to every aspect of our lives. And as we do that for our children, we do that for ourselves. And it starts making this big difference. Now, does that mean that we just are worry-free now and everything is smooth sailing? No. Because there's a devil and he hates us and he doesn't want us to get free and he doesn't want to know it, want us to know the fruit. The, the, <laughs> he doesn't want us to know the truth. So what's going to happen? Well, 
We're going to have people come out of the woodwork and tell us we're dumb. We're going to have people, uh, you know, attack us in so many ways. Um, there might be illness hits our family, economic troubles hit our family. Everything's going to come at us at different times to try to discourage us. But don't lose heart and don't give up. Even if your own kids don't take to it right away, like, you know, you throw them in the water, they don't want to swim. That's fine. That's God's business. Your job is to give them the truth and let God deal with the results, right? And if nothing else, you're going to come out a totally different person. <laughs> now, as I'm reading, I, you know, I get off my notes. So, um, I have been justified in taking the Bible as the actual, factual words of God, and my esteem and expectation of God has matured and increased. As I began to see God's hand in history and science and math and every part of my life, my esteem of Him only increased. My faith increased. My picture of who He is increased. My picture of what He can do through me increased. And every time something catastrophic happens in the world, this, that, or the other thing, I know that it's in God's plan. I know. Now, he's not working it out for good for everybody because the scripture says, you know, Romans 8, 28, he's working all things out for good, for the good for those who love him, for the ones that are called according to his purpose. So I want to make sure I'm on that side. <laughs> but anyway, um, and, and so... That's kind of what I have for you today. I know it's not very long, but I'm thinking if I keep it a little shorter, maybe you can listen to this one today, and then I can have one to you sooner that will eat, we'll, we'll go back over this subject, and we will brush on some different areas. So I hope this is blessed to you. You have a wonderful day. Please like and subscribe. Bye-bye.